Three words, 6K video. Is six a word or is that a number? In case the letter, one word, video. So guys, today we're taking a look at the brand new Panasonic S1H. This camera was just announced and the specs look crazy. Okay, so we're gonna be jumping into a bunch of different details. So if you wanna skip forward, if you've already seen some stuff, you just wanna learn something specific about it, you can look in the description and there will be time codes linked to all the things we're gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna keep it moving fast because I know there's a lot of videos out there. Some of them get long. I'm gonna get right to it. The Panasonic S1H. The big news that we're talking about today. You ready for this? 6K video. 6K video in a DSLR. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna jump into some history about Panasonic cameras. So Panasonic has had a ton of great cameras and great DSLRs over the years, and I've used a few of them. Uh, I used the AF100 in college. That was my, kind of an introduction for me to cinema cameras and shot a couple short films with that. And then on their DSLR line, the big breakthrough camera that they have is the GH2, which is famously picked by Francis Ford Coppola over the RED and the Alexa in a blind test. He chose the GH2 footage over those two cameras because he hates dynamic range. And the next camera we have is the GH3, which I used a couple times and worked on a short film and really loved the results of that camera. Then the GH4 comes out with 4K video, and this was a bomb in the DSLR world. I actually had a chance to rent this camera out and shoot a short film with it and loved it. We didn't know exactly what we were doing with it. I was shooting in a weird picture profile and white balance was off, but the results were still awesome. And even today, the camera still holds up. So then the GH5 and the GH5S come out, and the specs from the camera are amazing, the results from it were awesome. So then Panasonic comes out with the S1. Now this camera is actually a full frame mirrorless camera, whereas the GH line is micro four thirds. So we come to the end of the timeline now, so we're at present day, and Panasonic releases the S1H, just a few months after releasing the S1. Boom. So now the S1H is the third DSLR that's gonna be coming out in 2019 for Panasonic. So let's jump into the specs because I know most of you are probably here just to see what this camera can do. So Panasonic claims that this is gonna be the world's first full frame mirrorless camera to record 6K video. So let's take a look at those recording specs. So the 6K video I know everyone's gonna be talking about is available up to 24 frames a second, but only can shoot in the three to two aspect ratio. So this could be limiting for people. So I know most people are probably gonna be shooting at the 5.9K, which is in the 16 by nine ratio and that's up to 30 frames a second which is a little more useful for most shooters then there's the UHD and the DCI 4k which is up to 60 frames a second which is awesome and this is what I love 10 bit 422 recording in 4k 60 there's not many DSLRs that can do that I know the Fuji has the XT3 that can do that and Blackmagic has the pocket 4k but very few DSLRs can actually shoot 10 bit 422 in 4k at 60 frames a second that's Awesome. Now, as far as 1080 goes or slow motion frame rates, we haven't gotten a lot of information from Panasonic yet, but the S1 does do 180 frames a second in 1080. So we're expecting it to at least do that, maybe even 200 frames a second or 240 at 1080, which would be awesome. There's a four to three anamorphic D squeeze, which is an awesome thing. And I know a lot of people love that about the GH line. But important thing to note is all of this that we're talking about is recorded internally. None of these settings need an external recorder or any kind of recording outside of the camera. This is gonna go straight to a memory card inside your camera, which is huge. They also did away with the 2959 record limit, so you're able to record longer than 30 minutes at a time as long as your card can handle it. Now, a big thing too, that I love about this new camera is V-Log slash V-Gamut. So the GH line has the V-Log, but they have V-Log L. And so that's not true V-Log, and you're not getting the most out of the V-Log that you can. You're not getting the full color spectrum and the full use of that dynamic range. So with V-Log and V-Gamut, this is actually what you get from the Evo and the Vericam. This is the actual V-Log. So putting this into the DSLR and allowing the full color spectrum to be there, allowing to take use of the sensor's full dynamic range is huge. I know a lot of people are really excited about this. And you also still have the option to go to V-Log L to match up with the GH5 or other cameras that shoot that. So that's really awesome. And that's gonna be using the 14 plus stops of dynamic range that is claimed to be in this camera. Now we know camera companies will claim all kinds of things. And you see 14 plus and then people do tests and it's 11 and a half or whatever. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's close to 13 and a half, 14 stops of true effective usable dynamic range. So let's move on to the body now. So they've added a record button right next to the on off switch, which I love. So you can really tell that Panasonic is tailoring their products to filmmakers, especially with this S1 line. So they added a big record button like you'd find on a cinema camera. They've also added another record button down near where the lens mounts to be able to press it with your left hand, left pinky, I would guess. I don't know. 
Um, we're expecting it to have an SD card slot and an XQD card slot. They haven't chosen yet which card slots they're gonna have, but I would assume they have two with the kind of recording capabilities that you'd need. I'm assuming it's gonna be just like the S1, which has the SD and XQD card slot. Um, this is also an L-mount camera, so you're gonna be using Panasonic or Leica L-mount lenses, or you're gonna have to get an adapter to go to Canon lenses or, uh, or other lenses that will cover that full frame sensor. So the price is coming in at $4,000. which is pretty hefty for a DSLR. Um, they're looking to release this in the fall of 2019. Hopefully they won't be like Blackmagic where you're waiting six months to a year to receive the camera that you purchased that was supposed to ship last year. Luckily that didn't happen to me, but I know people are upset about it. I'd be upset. See, so I wanna hear what you guys think about the Panasonic S1H, so let me know in the comments below. Maybe $4,000 is too big of a price for a few. Yeah. Maybe 6K is not even on your radar, but I wanna hear from you guys and let me know what video you wanna see next. Peace.